Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing great today. Firmware version 20.5.0 has just been released, and the good news is it's already supported by Atmosphere. So, what does that mean? Yep, it means we can now update the custom firmware on our modded Switch. In today's video, I'm going to show you once again how to do it, but this time I'll be using a different custom firmware pack. In my previous videos, I always used the HAT pack, but for this one, I'll be switching to Ultra NX by RedRaz. All right, without further ado, let's jump straight into the tutorial. Right now, my Switch is still running firmware version 20.4.0, both on Immunand, Sysnand, and stock firmware. And we're going to update it to the latest version, which is 20.5.0. Before you start updating, I highly recommend backing up your important data, at least your save files and the games themselves. This backup step is crucial in case something goes wrong during the update and you need to set up your SD card again for custom firmware. That way, you won't lose any important data. I've already shown the full backup and restore process in this video, but if you're confident everything will go smoothly, you can skip this step. Before updating, you also need to uninstall any custom themes if you're currently using one. To do that, open the Homebrew menu from the album, then launch NX Theme Installer. Choose Uninstall Theme, then select Uninstall Everything. Confirm by choosing Yes, then OK, and finally, reboot your Switch. Next, we're going to download the two required files, the custom firmware pack itself and the original Switch firmware. Let's start by downloading the custom firmware pack, in this case, Ultra NX by RedRaz. I'm already on their GitHub page. Before downloading, let's take a look at the README file. Since this project is made by a Russian developer, the default language is Russian. To switch to English, click right here. As you can see, this custom firmware pack already supports the latest Switch firmware, version 20.5.0, which is the newest release at the time this video is being recorded. So it's safe to update the stock firmware via the internet. But take note, always make sure the custom firmware pack you're using supports the official firmware version you plan to update to. If the latest official firmware isn't yet supported by your CFW pack, do not update via the internet. Instead, update manually using Daybreak through Sysnand. The advantage of updating with Daybreak is that you can choose exactly which firmware version you want to install. And just so you know, if you update the firmware on Sysnand, your stock firmware will also get updated automatically. All right, let's continue. Here we can also see the list of features included in the Ultra NX pack, and it looks quite impressive, packed with a lot of useful tools and functionalities. Scrolling down, we can check the contents of the pack, which of course includes Atmosphere and Hecate. What's really interesting here is a tool called Ultra Tuner. As explained, this tool allows you to fine-tune your console's overclocking parameters. So, in case you experience unstable overclocking or you want to boost your console's performance, this feature can help a lot. Down here, we can also see that the pack already includes several payloads, modules, homebrew applications, and overlays that are commonly used on modded Switch consoles. You can scroll through and read the descriptions to learn the function of each item listed here. All right, let's move on to the download process. To download, scroll back to the top of the GitHub page and click right here. Or, if you're on the main GitHub page, you can also go to the Releases section and click Download from there, either the button here or the link at the bottom of the page. Next, we're going to download the official Switch firmware version 20.5.0, which we'll be using in this tutorial. You can get it from the Zoria's GitHub page. Click here to start the download. Once both files have finished downloading, extract them. Now the preparation part is done. We've got all the files we need. The next step is to update the stock firmware. Before updating the custom firmware, it's better to update the stock firmware first to the same version that we'll be using for the custom firmware update. First, boot your switch into the original or stock firmware. 
Since my switch is currently running on Emunand, I'm going to restart it to enter Hecate. For those using Autoboot and don't know how to access Hecate, here's how. After selecting Restart, press and hold the Volume Down button. Now we're inside Hecate. For now, I'll disable Auto Boot by going into the Options menu, selecting Disable at the top right, then choosing Save and confirming with OK. After that, go back to the Hecate home screen. Now we're going to boot into the stock firmware. Select Reboot, then choose OFW. The switch is now running on the original firmware. Connect it to the internet by going to System Settings, then Internet, and Internet Settings. Choose your Wi-Fi network and select Connect to the Internet. OK. Now select System Update, then Update, and confirm with OK. Wait for the update process to finish. The switch will restart automatically. And if you previously disabled auto boot like I did, it'll boot back into Hecate. Now that we're back in Hecate, let's boot the switch again into stock firmware just to make sure the update was successful. Choose Reboot, then select OFW. Go back into System Settings, scroll down to System, and as you can see here, the stock firmware has now been successfully updated to version 20.5.0. As expected, the SysNand firmware is now also updated to version 20.5.0, since, like I mentioned earlier, when you update the stock firmware, the SysNand firmware gets updated automatically, and vice versa. We'll check the SysNand firmware in just a bit, but for now, let's continue to the next step, updating the custom firmware, which runs on EmuNand. First, power off your switch, remove the SD card, and plug it into your computer. Here, we're going to copy the two files we downloaded earlier, the Ultra NX Custom Firmware Pack and the official Switch Firmware. Let's start with the Custom Firmware Pack. What we need to copy are the contents of the extracted folder into the root directory of the SD card. Before copying, delete the existing Atmosphere, Bootloader, and Config folders. You can also delete the Switch folder if you don't want to keep the Homebrew apps from your previous Custom Firmware Pack. In my case, I'll leave it as it is, since I already have quite a few homebrew applications installed. All right, let's continue with the copying process. Once again, make sure you copy only the contents of the extracted folder directly into the root of your SD card. Don't place them inside another folder. Wait for the copying process to finish. And when a confirmation window pops up, choose Replace the files in the destination. Done. Next, we'll copy the official Switch firmware folder. This time, copy the entire folder to the root of the SD card. Just a heads up, you can delete this folder later once the whole update process is complete. Alright, everything's ready. Now eject the SD card safely from your computer and insert it back into your switch. Power on your switch. Unlike the Hat Pack, Ultra NX has auto boot already set to Emunand, so it will boot directly into Emunand. But if you want to go into Hecate to change any settings, hold down the volume down button while booting. Now the switch is running in Emunand. Before we start updating, let me show you the current firmware version under System Settings. As you can see, even though we've switched to the Ultra NX pack, the firmware is still 20.4.0. Alright, let's continue with the update. Open the Homebrew menu from the album. Important note, to access the Homebrew menu, you must hold the R button while opening the album. Otherwise, it'll just open the regular album menu. Once inside, select Daybreak. Tap Install. Then choose the folder containing the official Switch firmware we copied earlier. Wait a few moments for the validation process. Once it's done, select Continue. On the next screen, choose Preserve Settings. Then finally, select Install to start the firmware update. Now wait for the update process to complete. When it's finished, select Reboot. The switch will boot back into Eminand. 
Go to System Settings again and check the firmware version. As you can see, the firmware has successfully been updated to version 20.5.0. Nice! The Emunand firmware update was successful. Now, let's also check the firmware on SysNand. To do that, restart your switch. When you see the Ultra Boot logo, hold the volume down button to enter Hecate. We'll launch SysNand from there. Unlike the Hat Pack, the SysNand boot options are located under More Config. Here, you'll find three options, two for SysNand, semi-stock and semi-safe, plus one called Nintendo or full stock. To boot into SysNand, choose either of the first two options. I'll pick semi-safe for this one. All right, now the switch is running in SysNand. Let's go to System Settings and scroll down to system. As you can see here, the firmware version has also been updated to 20.5.0. Perfect. That means both Emunand and SysNand are now running the latest version. Before we wrap up this video, I want to show you one of the features included in the Ultra NX pack. Let's boot the switch back into Emunand. If you hold RL and up on the D-pad, the Ultra Hand menu will appear on the left side of the screen. From here, you can access a bunch of different functions. Feel free to explore each one on your own. If you press the right on the D-pad, you'll open the Ultra Tuner menu. Here, you can adjust various system configurations and settings. Under the Download section below, there are more menus like Updater, Software, and Mod. You can try them out and learn how each one works. The full list of features and their explanations can also be found in the Ultra NX GitHub README section. Alright, that's it for today's tutorial. If you have any questions or if there's something that's still unclear, feel free to ask in the comment section. I'll try to answer as best as I can. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with anyone who might need this tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.